Hi, and welcome to Morning Afterglow. Yesterday, we turned to Revelation chapter 1, verses 4 through 8, which uh, is a remarkable passage on the nature of God in the Holy Trinity as it relates to how we Christians should view our lives, human history, and should become a foundation for our sense of peace and comfort no matter what happens in our lives. Now, that's a long sentence to say that was a real good passage of Scripture. Uh, it actually starts out uh, as a basic salutation in a letter. Uh, John is writing to the seven churches, and he just simply uses that oft-found refrain uh, in the New Testament, <clears throat> grace and peace uh, to you. Uh, but I think there's more to it than just using the words grace and peace. I think the concepts are truly meant there. But we'll come back to that in just a bit. And then he goes into verses 4 uh, through 8 talking about God. Uh, if you want to solve your problem, may I recommend that you just start with talking about God. God is the solution. God is the answer. God is the platform upon which we build our comfort and our peace. And it's interesting because he talks about the Trinity, talks about to him who uh, is, who was, and who is to come uh, in, in verse 4, and to talk about the seven spirits before the throne, which we believe to be uh, talking about the Holy Spirit. And then he speaks in verses 5, 6, and 7 about Jesus Christ, and he describes him in seven glorious ways there. He talks about him being a faithful witness. He, he talks about him uh, being the king, uh, the ruler of, of all kings. Uh, he talks about his blood uh, releasing us from our sins. Uh, and then he talks about his glory and his majesty and his honor. And he talks about his second coming, uh, that he will come back in the clouds of glory and every eye will see him, so on and so forth. And then the passage ends with verse 8, again, returning to the general overview of the nature of God, uh, to him who is, who was, and who is to come, the Lord God, the Alpha and the Omega. Uh, he is the Almighty. <clears throat> And I ask myself the question, what is John talking about? Why is he talking so much about God here? Well, I think here's the reason. He's going to talk about some very difficult things in the book. And it's going to get very dark and very difficult. Have you ever had days like that? When you got a bad report from the doctor, you lost your job, something went wrong, and your life just seems to be trembling and perhaps broken. What's the solution to that? Well, you go back to God. Uh, and I think that's what John is doing. He's establishing in this first chapter, and we'll see this throughout the remainder of the chapter, how he's talking about God, Jesus Christ, as a foundation for how we view life. We will have peace, and we will have confidence and courage to face anything that comes if we begin with a true understanding of who God is. I think this is John's version of Isaiah chapter 6 when Isaiah the prophet said, In the year King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple, and the angels cried, Holy, 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 so on and so forth. And so Isaiah the prophet got a renewed sense of calling and purpose when he got a fresh vision of God. I think that's what John is doing here. And I hope you and I'll keep that in mind. No matter what we face this week, let's remember God is in control. God is the sovereign God of the universe. He is the one to whom we must come and to whom we must trust in the context of the gospel and His divine providence to take care of us. I'm praying for you today, and I pray God will bless you and take care of you and watch over you, and I pray that He will turn your heart and your attention towards the Lord Himself. Well, it's been good to be together, and we'll look forward to seeing you next time on Morning Afterglow.